What's up, everybody? Welcome back to 30 to Life. It's your boy Uso Ron, and today we're going to talk about the Tongan rapper Juice Boy, who was gunned down in his own driveway in San Mateo, California. Let's get into it. If you ask people living in the city of San Mateo what they think about their hometown, many would say there is no greater place to live. While violent crimes do occur, it is highly unusual for someone to lose their lives in the hands of another. However, in 2020, Sam Mateo's homicide rate suddenly spiked and the police were left with four murder victims, including rapper Ueta Musica Jr., whom many knew by his artist name Juice Boy. Juice was part of a group from Shoreview, California called Cutthroat Mode, together with two other rappers, Mr. Music and Rich Roland. Cutthroat Mode had started their journey like so many music groups before them, from a garage. Eventually, the trio moved into playing in local bars and pubs before their hard work paid up, and they were signed by 454 Life Entertainment in 2012. Since then, the group and each individual artist have grown a significant fan base and gone on to several tours around the world. According to the group members, Juice was the one who always helped others to be the best version of themselves, even when others doubted their mission. In other words, Juice kept the train rolling, which is not surprising as his number one rule for life was never quit. Juice would have definitely kept going and who knows what he and his group could have achieved if his life would not have been cut short. On October 30th, 2020, at approximately 9.40 a.m., San Mateo police officers were dispatched to the 1600 block of Eleanor Drive. This morning, and the killer is still on the run tonight. This is the view from NBC Bay Area Sky Ranger. It happened just after 9 this morning on Eleanor Drive, which is near the 10192 interchange. Neighbors say they heard about three or four gunshots, and when police arrived, a 30-year-old man was slumped in his car, and he died at the scene. Juice Boy himself was lying on the ground with bloodstains on his clothes. He had been shot 14 times. Juice Boy's two-year-old son was also found at the scene with a gunshot wound to his face. It appeared that Juice Boy had been getting ready to leave with his son that morning when he was ambushed on his own driveway by the shooter or shooters. Miraculously, the little child survived the vicious attack and was transported to a nearby trauma center. His father, however, did not. Juice Boy was pronounced dead at the scene. He was only 30 years old. While the police did not yet have a clue who had cold-bloodedly killed a man carrying a toddler in the middle of the morning, they immediately knew the attack had been personal and targeted. One does not shoot someone 14 times by accident. Then just days after, officers responded to three non-injury shootings within a three mile radius. It is believed these shootings are connected to the first one. The citizens were already taking matters into their own hands. According to the police, they received reports of civilians closing the streets and shining flashlights into occupied cars. Everybody was feeling the tension increasing in that city that was considered to be such a safe place. Meanwhile, multiple vigils were held to remember Juice Boy, and thousands of people arrived in San Mateo to celebrate his life. One of those who attended the vigils was Patriots rookie Devin Asiasi, to whom Juice Boy was like a family member. We all grew up with each other. I've known him as damn near a big brother to me, so it was like it's all of us growing up where I grew up. He was just a hard-working man an inspiration to all of us in my neighborhood, in my city of San Mateo. Police were definitely under pressure to find Juice Boy's killer and strengthen the community once again. Their investigation would eventually extend to multiple states and last 18 months, but in the end, they solved the case. One and a half years after the audacious killing of Juice Boy on April 18, 2022, at 10 a.m., Multiple law enforcement agencies arrived at the 4700 block of Abendigo Road in Charlotte, North Carolina. A 29-year-old man named John Passi was arrested and transported to a local jail before extradition to San Mateo County. That same day, around 11.50 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, SMPD and local law enforcement in Honolulu, Hawaii, 
apprehended another man named 30-year-old Isalehi Mahe at his residence located at the 2400 block of Date Street. Like John, he was transported to a local jail to wait for extradition to San Mateo County. So now the police had two suspects in custody, but how were they connected to the murder? As the investigation is still ongoing, all the details are not available at this time, but according to San Mateo police, John Posse actually knew Juice Boy for more than 15 years. The investigators have also revealed that they believe the motive for the murder is somehow related to another death that took place a few years earlier. Apparently, in 2019, an 85-year-old woman named Susan Tonga died in a fire that was deliberately set Four people were able to get out of the home, but the help did not arrive soon enough for Susan. Fefita Tao was arrested three days after the fire and is held without bail at the San Mateo County Jail on murder charges. The police have said that they believe the fire was somehow gang related, but they have not commented on why John Pasi and Isalehi Mahe thought Juice Boy had something to do with it. For now, everyone is waiting for the extradition process to be finished which can take between 30 to 90 days. After that, we might eventually get answers to what really happened to Juice Boy. Cutthroat Mode has since continued their journey, but has not forgotten Juice. They released an album called Juice Mode in 2021 to honor the memory of their former member who was taken from them way too soon. Damn y'all, that's crazy. Right in the middle of his own driveway, shot 14 times with his kid, and then this kid gets shot in the face too. I don't know what's happening with people out here, man. Especially me growing up Islander, it was a different type of way of life. We had more of a respect for family members, for people's parents, for elders, for children. It seems like nowadays people don't give a fuck. They just shooting anyone, anywhere, anytime. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it just ain't the business. As always, I hate to see my Polynesian brothers, my Tongan brothers, out there killing each other like this, especially when there really ain't that many Tongans in the world, man. What y'all doing? But uh, this seemed more of a personal type thing. Looks like uh, there was a lot of retaliation going on. You know, we're gonna find out more about it when these guys go to trial. I'll do an update on that. I just hate seeing that, you know, our folks are out there doing this to each other. And especially when innocent people are getting involved, getting hurt behind the bullshit. I don't know, man. It's time for y'all to start waking up and realizing that hurting others just to solve what happened in your life, it ain't doing shit. It's just causing more hurt and continuing the same path of destruction that we all are on. So it's just a sad case that we lose good people with good talent and uh, people that are out here trying to help others. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully one day we can all get it together. Y'all know what it is. Stay the fuck out of trouble. Cause I know that I gave it all I had from the start And I know that I gave him all the love from my heart